Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science Show Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about gas separation membranes. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the need for such a complex technology? Well, the reality is we need clean gas. What does clean gas actually means? Clean simply means the percentage of desirable should be exponentially higher than the percentage of undesirable, meaning you want biogas to only contain methane. Everything else should be minuscule, meaning it should be uh, hopefully in single digit percent. Ideally, it would be in PPMs, parts per million. So that's the desire. We need clean gas for many fields and these fields are not like oh this field only this field no 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 no. like I'm talking about industry health fuel everything that affects you does need this puppy and on top of that like we have a need side what about the source side uh, most sources are not clean specifically biogas like that puppy is naughty like that's like no sir even natural gas uh, natural gas is also very dirty what does that mean that simply means you look at a natural gas well and you're like Psh! You're like, hey, methane. Uh, not necessarily. There is a very good chance you're going to get some carbon dioxide, some extra love of uh, basically some sulfur compounds with some extra love of some mercury compounds sometimes also. Uh, so you get the point. Like there is a lot of stuff, carbon dioxide, other stuff that you do not want to send in your engines. And let's not even talk about biogas. It stinks because of the impurities, literally. Crude oil, like it's literally like crude oil. So we need something that allows us to remove portions of unwanted meaning if let's say you want to give someone oxygen concentrator and you're like hey this individual's lungs are compromised we need to give more oxygen rather than let's say 20 25 percent of natural air we want to oomph it up to let's say 50 percent so if they can breathe easily oxygen could dissolve dissolve into their body easily you need that control basically portion of unwanted you want unwanted in that scenario would be either carbon dioxide or nitrogen mostly nitrogen but you get the point like basically there's always unwanted mix there and we want to control it be it biogas natural gas air again is if, what if you need nitrogen for industrial processes or what if you need oxygen for industrial pro or what if you need argon for industrial processes many things that we need basically we need selective filtering that's all we are looking about. Like, how do we select? Where's like, hey, air, hey, how about nitrogen? You go there, oxygen, you go there. That's all we want. So that's the need part of it. So as the principle, now let this be very clear. The principles are complex and intermingled. Basically, it's like a triangle. So you have size that is controlling one vector. You have diffusivity that is controlling another vector. Solubility that is controlling another vector. These three uh, get married together in a threesome and that's decide what is gonna work how the heck it's gonna work how it's like you know which uh, items it's gonna allow through which item is gonna reject everything goes in all three columns now size is the first thing now if you ever wondered what the heck somebody is like a PhD in chemical engineering does this is what they do like ask common people which molecule is bigger uh, for example carbon dioxide or water vapor most of them they will be confused Molecule wise, I'm talking like what is bigger CO2 or H2O or something uh, simpler like H2O uh, basically H2 or O2 which is bigger physically bigger. So you can see the point and there are especially in compounds it's very confusing like which is bigger freaking methane or water. So it's very very messy. So this is what people have to do like when they're starting out to design membrane they will figure out like what do you want to select. Best case is hydrogen because hydrogen is the smallest puppy. So let's say you are running an electrolyzer cell and that cell is producing um, hydrogen on one side but there is some oxygen. Now problem with uh, that solution is that yeah you have to have 99.999% purity of hydrogen otherwise if you store even 1% of oxygen in that tank it's not a tank it's a boomer. So for that reason, you can understand that people want absolute purity of hydrogen in tanks. So for that reason, they need to use something that can make sure that it's as close to pure as possible. So hydrogen, thankfully, leaks out through because everything because it's very small and oxygen is a big puppy. So it is very easy to reject. So size is the first thing. Like, what do you want to remove? So you can look at another example. If you have, let's say, biogas production and that production has a lot of CO2, eh, easy to reject. Nitrogen, eh, easy to reject. Methane, and, uh, you know, you can easily selectively say methane, you go that direction. Uh, CO2, you come this direction. Nitrogen, you come this direction. Hydrogen sulfide, hopefully come this direction. Be mindful, it, this system won't be absolutely perfect, but it's like probability kind of thing. Like 99% molecules will go in this way. Uh, remaining will be. You have to add pressure for it. Be mindful, it does not work for free. You have to add pressure for it. So that's the first layer, size. Then you have diffusivity. Like if you ever wondered like why the heck there are so many chemical compounds used for making essentially the same thing, that's the reason because 
how the heck this molecule behaves compared to this molecule will directly be decided by the structure of the membrane. If the membrane is made out of calcium, it will be reacting differently. If it's made out of hydrocarbon, it would be reacting differently. If it's made out of something ceramic, it would be behaving differently. So diffusivity allows things to go through and if you have very poor diffusivity, it may give you higher purity but it may reduce your flow. So even with the same options, you may be like, hey, uh, I want like let's say biogas filter. You may have a two companies giving you completely different structure. The one may be like, hey, I give you higher purity. Other may be like, hey, we're giving you high flow. Choose what you want. So diffusivity that decides on a chemical level, like what is the elements that is going on. And if you ever wondered how the heck leaf sucks in carbon dioxide, yeah, that's how it does. Like carbon dioxide is like this. So it's kind of easy to go in, but very hard to come out. <laughs> so like if you look at the geometry of the plant's uh, stomata and like on a molecular level, membrane level, it's surprisingly complex. So diffusivity allows you to get that. Then you have solubility, like it is going through stuff. It's not a hole there where it's just going through. It's like on a chemical level, it's going through crystal lattice. Like from its point of view, it's like, especially in gas, it's like, oh, there is crystal lattice. I'm going through that crystal lattice. So solubility also matters. Now that vector solubility is not said as solubility, it's measured as diffusion coefficient. So if you're buying a product to flat out say diffusion coefficient of each gases. Because be mindful, nothing is absolutely pure. It will be like the coefficient on this direction, on this gas is this high, on this gas it will this. You have to do the math. And all these three things together get married, they get the job done. Uh, if things are unbalanced, good luck. It's not going to work. And element structures, that defines how fast you can do it and how much you can do it. And purity also. Basically, some designs will allow you to achieve very high purity, like, like almost 99 percentile purity. Some scenarios, you're like 95 is good enough, so you're like, well, let's stop at 95, but it has high flow rate. So these are the core principle of it. Geometry level and then the crystal lattice level. And be mindful, this is the advanced chemistry nerds. This is what people do when they talk about like, I have Christ, uh, you know, PhD in chemistry. This is what their level allows them to understand. This is far beyond my understanding. Like H2O is smaller. Like H2O is actually smaller than uh, O2. I did not even knew that. So what are the tools that we utilize? Well, tools are spiral wound around a hollow pipe. So basically you take a hollow pipe, uh, Fujifilm makes it. Uh, somebody in Fuji was very smart. They realized they were really good at making things float in emulsion. They're like, hey, that's 90% of technology. They just go, uh, went with other technology. So, uh, so that, that's what the membrane is. Membrane is rolled around it. And then a membrane also has separators. It's basically RO that is, instead of designed for water, it's designed for gases. That's it, nothing else. So it gives you low cost because again, inherently simpler design, gives you high flow, meaning how much gas you can process. That's also high. It's acid resistant, meaning CO2 does have the tendency to destroy things. Uh, acid resistance allows, this simply means if you have a lot of concentration of CO2, this puppy will not disintegrate on a chemical level. Because be mindful, you are diffusing through it. Uh, if like, for example, if you do not design it properly, hydrogen has the ability to go through metal and it, we, call, uh, we call it hydrogen embrittlement, meaning it can make your metals brittle by going through it. It will just, uh, excuse me, please, 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 please. It just cracks through stuff. That's why hydrogen sealing is so difficult. And then uh, this is the basic variant. Then we have complex variant known as hollow fiber membrane unit like this puppy. And yes, that's an electron microscope. Yes, that's a very tiny hair. It's almost smaller than your human hair and it's hollow. Do not ask me how which witchcraft allows a humanity to do this on a commercial scale, but somehow we cracked it. I told you, like we we are we are strong, bro. We good. We know how to do things, and uh, that's how it's done. Now it's part of course wound, and you design the structures of that based on your requirement. Do you want it to remove CO2? Do you want it to uh, basically remove nitrogen? You will select the membrane based on that, the elements and all that. It does give you basically higher purity. Does it's a very desirable for biogas because it does have very tolerant behavior, meaning the chemicals that can go inside it without damaging it is much higher compared to this puppy. This puppy is like clean to super clean. This puppy is like a eh, bit of dirt I can handle. Uh, so it does last longer, but it is uh, flow rate is a bit lower. So and both can be mixed together. Be mindful whenever you're talking about like uh, stages, it's not necessary to use only one. You could be like, hey, I'm going to use spiral one. Let's say you have a biogas plant. You have a lot of flow. Why you have a lot of flow? It has a lot of contaminants. You have a lot of water vapor. You have a lot of CO2, a lot of stuff. So this puppy can be your first line of defense. It removes bulk of it. What happens after that? Majority of your gas pressure drops and uh, the flow rate goes down because again, you are removing stuff from it, uh, the flow. 
then you can take that flow and send it to hollow fiber and uh, all of these puppy work efficiently if you slow them down basically if you give them time it can give you amazing result like if you have a compressed air tank and you send it through a nitrogen separation membrane you force everything to go very quickly separation will be poor you let them slowly diffuse through it will be very efficient so sometimes people do multi-stage so they may be like hey this is the bulk removal the output from this goes into input of this to get absolutely high purity so these are the tool sets that we utilize well is there a use of this puppy well absolutely everything uses this from hydrogen industrial use uh, specifically if you have uh, basically electrolyzers that are producing fuel cell basically that is producing your hydrogen and it's mixed with something yeah you need it uh, industrial use and lot of metallurgy and power plants to consume hydrogen yes power plants consume hydrogen for generator cooling then you have methane of course bio, uh, biogas uh, and natural gas very important nitrogen medical use and industrial use so again this is a bit awkward kind of stage it's not generally uh, for super large plant if you have a super large plant like let's say star base and it's that puppy is consuming like nitrogen like there is no tomorrow and liquid oxygen like there is no tomorrow yeah it's not for that scale let that be like this is a specific tool not for that kind of scale so uh, for hospitals this is the this is your guy and most hospitals do have this nowadays you can look around them some large hospitals have their own oxygen concentrator working in the like basement and slowly accumulating a very high quality uh, oxygen supply without requiring like you know gas uh, continuous gas tank inputs so there are a lot of use of it a lot of use like a medium to large enterprise uh, giga enterprise would be like yeah this is a bit limited so what are the limits? Well, the limit is the first thing, the purity is limited, meaning when we go through other phases for specifically like cryogenic, like, like you take the air and you liquefy it, now you have absolute purity. Like there won't even be like few molecules of water. Like instead of percentage, you have to measure in PPMs. It, it will be that pure. So if you want absolutely high purity, which will be a requirement for let's say rocket engine and things of that nature, this is not up to it. And if you are talking in tons, hundreds of tons, yeah, again, not really desirable for that so in those sort of scenario where your requirement is very high and purity requirement is also high other systems make more sense specifically air uh, distillation so for example i do expect elon Musk to build a air distillation plant near to boca chica sooner or later because they will be like dude why we are paying for diesel like we pay for that electricity that is going into their air distillation plant, then they are uh, collecting it and then they are collecting their profit then they are like, putting it in trucks then we are sending the trucks and then we are burning the diesel it's like what if we just do it ourselves so in those sort of scenario air distillation will make more sense um, however there is one weird thing that i have noticed same way in silicon like there is a very serious bottleneck meaning if taiwan goes boom for whatever reason like let's say flooding happened in hard drives hard drive platters were only manufactured in one factory and most of you should be old enough where you can remember that like hard drive prices were like low and getting lower and the flood happened it doubled it never came down and again now high drives are literally being phased out so it's no longer that of big of a issue but that was a supply chain limitation corona also did the same thing and uh, chip shortage was a real thing so this also has the same issue where it's like it's very important for industry not one many industry from medical to enterprise to everything that you can think of it is very important technology however only few companies manufacture it like fujifilm was smart uh, so only few companies make it in the whole world it's not like there is no company it's just only few companies make it and then a uh, lot of r d is under construction right now my primary desire would be to if somebody can make it in india specifically for biogas india really did not utilize biogas properly if we can really utilize it we can be some serious powerful nation like like people have no idea how much biogas we are just farting away if you can utilize that puppy it's like we are talking like almost we can run a whole nation for one week with just our natural gas it's like not natural gas biogas but you're like bro like uh, we save for one year and one week that system and again save the environment also as a benefit and make profit on the side as a benefit so there are some limitations and people are trying to solve it so this was my presentation on basically uh, gas membrane separation technology uh, hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching